So one of the bands that were in the area was Hammerhead. Yeah. How did you meet the Hammerhead guys? Well, they came, we had already been going for a few years and they moved from a small, weird town way out in the middle of nowhere by North Dakota, Fargo. And what's it connected to the Minnesota town? Moorhead. And so they came, they did a show with us actually. And they were, I think, already fans of the cows and they were new. So we hadn't heard of them. And I've said this in other other views. It's the only time I was down in the basement, like in the band room while they were playing. I wasn't watching them. And it's the only time I can remember where Shannon came and found me and said, you should probably come upstairs and watch this bass player. Because he was so, Paul was just so good and so strong and so unlike any other bass playing I'd ever seen or heard. And you're just like, going, oh, yeah, that's cool. So it just went from there. Mutual admiration. We went on tours together and got to know each other real well. Spent a lot of time together. And eventually, at a certain point, both Cows and Hammerhead were on hiatus, and you ended up jamming with Paul and Jeff. Yeah. Was it very Was it very natural? It sure was. I mean, I don't even know if we were on hiatus so much. You know, it was just, you, know, you don't, tour, we didn't tour 12 hour, uh, months a year, so yeah, I guess that's hiatus. But yeah, I mean, we hung out all the time, and, and we all shared music, and it was very organic and very instant. I don't even remember what started the ball rolling but they lived in a house that there was a i think they lived there yeah and there was a basement this is in minnesota where it's you know 40 below zero and they had a basement carpeted downstairs basement like a room that you could rehearse in without bothering anyone and, you know it's freezing cold and out we go and we just go down there and play and those songs like just because we knew each other so well and the it was we didn't have to learn to play together we could just do it and those songs were written very quickly and with n- no planning. It was just like, oh, how about this? Yeah, cool. Let's do this. All right. It was quick and easy and really fun. D- did you have it in mind that you wanted to write some songs when you started jamming with them? I don't remember. Okay. <laughs> I don't, you know, it was... A- I should mention that this was more than, you know, this was almost 25 years ago. Yeah. Well, uh, it- when you guys started recording these songs. Yeah, yeah these recorded. Yeah, these, these were recorded like sometime in the late 90s and then... We never, we recorded him at this guy, Mike Wistie's house. Like, I think he had the amps in the basement and ran big, long cables. And I, I think I remember playing up in the kitchen. Like, it was very grassroots, meat and potatoes. And, but they came out good, but there was no vocals on them, no overdubs, nothing. And then every few years, <laughs> one of us would say, oh, we should finish that. Yeah. And then nothing. And then a few years ago, it just came up on my shuffle, you know, on my computer. And it, I was like, God, I really do like this stuff a lot. I heard it. And I just, I think I just said, hey, I'm just going to go ahead and put vocals on this if, if you guys are down, you know. And they're like, yeah, go for it, whatever. And I did it. And, and then uh, Paul came up with a couple that he had done vocals on in the past that were just great, you know, like. So we used those two. And I think I added a little bit of guitar and some weird noises here and there. And then I have a friend here in LA who's a great mixer. And he took, you know, we already had the basic tracks. We didn't have those separate tracks, but he was able to take those and then the other, the new tracks and mix it all together. And it came out really well. He did a great job. It came out good. And I just kept sending to those guys going, is this okay? And they're like, yeah, yeah, it's great. Don't worry about it. So it was a, had a bit, it was book, we bookended a big, empty range of time right i should mention that this this project is called gas war mm-hmm. so are you and paul both playing bass or taking turns with bass and guitar no no he's playing guitar okay I see. he's a great guitar player and very unusually unique strange tunings i think we both use strange tunings or just not just not the usual tuning standard he's a great guitar player so that was no problem great sense of melody and jeff you know shit I listen to that, and the, the stuff we did with him is as good as any of the Jeff stuff I've heard. He's just, they're great players, so for me, it was nothing but pleasure. <laughs> I would stack those two guys up against any musicians in the world. I mean, they're they're world-class players. They're really good, above average. I mean, other than, than just liking the songs, was there any other reason you wanted to, to resurrect and release the Gas War Sessions? No, that was it. I just didn't want those songs to get lost. I thought... I hadn't heard him for a while. I heard him, and I always knew I liked him. But they, re- after not hearing him for a second, they just sounded just as 
authentic and fresh as ever. And I was like, ah. and my wife hadn't heard it. And she heard it. She's a big music fan. And she was also just like, you need to see if you can finish this stuff. So we did. It was easy to finish. It was no problem. How do you compare Gas War to, uh, to the music you made with, with Cows? You know, to my ears, it sounds exactly like what it is, a cross between Hammerhead and the Cows. <laughs> I mean, the biggest difference to my mind in those two bands is just the choice in melodies and rhythms. Like you mentioned that weird Cows rhythm thing, whatever it is. And then they have their own very distinct style in rhythms and in melodies. And it those two things came together. You know, that that's the biggest thing, I think. And we were we were appreciative of each other's proficiency and totally trusted each other. So there was no second guessing parts, nothing. There was no arguing, zero. Is this uh do this? Oh cool. Do this? Nah. Okay, don't. There was no ego. It was just everyone really liked music. We liked the same music and we liked each other's playing. It really was an easy, organic and efficient. And then we did a couple of live shows and people really liked it. We we're like, oh, good, because you never know if you're hypnotizing yourself. Maybe it's not as good as you think, but it sure seemed good. And then when we played it, people really liked it. Yeah. And then, like I said, it'd been a while. I heard it again. I was like, man, I really, it would be a real shame if this never came out. I thought that really was the only motivation i wanted people to hear it because i thought it was good you mentioned you recorded this in mike wistie's basement yeah w what were the sessions like did he have like a an a track or something like that i don't know what he used i couldn't even tell you sessions was us one time we knew those songs and you recorded everything live yeah we knew those songs inside and out so it was no problem just, oh, you mean all three at once? God, I don't even remember. I couldn't even tell you. I bet Paul would remember or Jeff. But I don't think we went in separately. I think we just knocked them out. Like, I, in my memory, was like one or two takes, and that was it. It's boom, boom, boom. Do you prefer uh, recording live? Not at all. You don't? I, not meaning I don't like it. Meaning I like, I'll, I'll do any styles. I like recording. I like a lot. And I like doing it a lot of different ways. I haven't recorded live in a long time because it's, it's not always the most efficient way and it's, it doesn't always get you the sounds you want, but not because I'm against it. I mean, most engineers will <laughs> will discourage bands from recording live, but I know a few bands who, who want to do it. They just, you know, it, it is what it is. Depends on who you're working with, too. You know, the, the guy we're working with, he calls himself Pseudo Beast. Is is that word pseudo or suedo? I can it's pseudo, right? I think it's pseudo, yeah. Yeah. He I love working with him. He's just like the the hammerhead guys or people I've worked with that it went well with is he'll do anything. He's not opposed. If I were to say, let's do this all live, he'd go, All right, let's do that. We don't need to do this live. Okay. I mean I've recorded a good chunk of my vocals on the phone. He has, he's never once said one thing about it. You send it over, and he makes it sound good. And I love people like that that are willing to do. Like I did a record with you know who Trevor Dunn is, right? Mr. Bungle. Yeah, he and I did a record together, and it, we just did it by email, no pressure. There were no rules, and it went went great. I love people like that. Just send it back and forth. What do you think of this? I think it's great. I wanted to do this. Do you mind? Not at all. Do whatever you think. And I love working open-ended like that. There's very little controlling going on. No egos. Just the goal is to make something that we think is good. And it, it works very well in my life. That's not for everyone, but it works for me. So I would do live recording if I thought there was some advantage to it, or I was trying to save time or something. But I don't generally anymore. And the, mostly, I don't think I have in my whole life. Now that when I think about it, I mean, the cows didn't do it. But I think that gas war might have been live, but we wouldn't have been in the same room. But, you know, we could play together no problem. So we probably just knocked it out. The Melvins were like that. You could just do it, you know. So the sessions will be re released as Girl Vanishes on Way to Jive Club. Yeah. And Rock as Hell will be handling the, the physical release and you guys will be handling digital release through your own Bandcamp page. We'll be handling the physical release of, in the United States also. I see, okay. Rock as Hell is doing the world just because shipping is it's too much. You know, I can't 
with a clear mind, ask someone in Germany, the clear conscience, say, well, it's $40 shipping. Yeah. Right. So, so we do U.S., and then he does the rest of the world. And uh, that's how we've done many records with him, and it's worked out great every time. 